Hello everyone and thank you for stopping by this video. My name is Abdullah, I am an engineer, but I also have a passion for photography, which will be the subject of many of my projects on this channel. So as you have seen in this video titled, this is a camera build. And if you happen to be an enthusiast analog photographer, you may have already guessed that this is a 4x5 large format field camera. If you're not aware what this really is, I ask you to hang around if you love machining, products design and manufacturing as there will be plenty of that also. But first, I need to explain to my fellow photographers why I need to build this camera. I started photography as a hobby in 2013. I went through many types of photography from landscapes, sports, cars and motorcycles. But my favorite has always been landscapes and cityscapes. In 2015, I got hooked into analog photography when I found an old camera at home that belonged to my father. I started shooting, developing and scanning my own film and quickly moved from 35mm to medium format and later to 4x5 large format. I quickly turned from a photographer who shoots thousands of photos every month to a maximum of 3 photos maybe. But those were planned photos, deliberate and slow, and I liked that about it. There is no stress or rush to take a photo and quickly share it on social media. I still did that, but not as much as before. I'm a big fan of slight film. And if you have never seen a large format slight film, I strongly advise you to find one and look at it through a magnifying loop or better through a slide projector. My current camera is a Shin Hao, which is a good camera, uh, offering a very good value for money compared to what you have to pay for a new Ebony or even a one in a good condition. But I've always got frustrated with the camera movement. I hated, for example, that there was uh, one lock for both the swing and left-right uh, shift on the front. I hated the recessed plates for short lenses and extension tubes for long lenses. I struggled with accurate composition, which is key for slides. I was looking for a way to be able to make fine composition adjustments, as with slide film you don't get to crop it after you, you've uh, shoot it if you are planning to put in a slide projector. And yes, I have a 4x5 slide projector which I built myself. But that's another project. So I found myself looking for a camera that has good movement and independent locks for every possible movement. And I found it. It was a monorail camera that had all that I wanted in terms of camera movement. But it came at a hefty price of size and weight. And I was trapped. I mainly shoot outdoors. I walk for long distance carrying my equipment. I shoot in the city where I try not to draw much attention to what I'm doing. I like to include near and far elements in my compositions and I like to keep both sharp, which is usually pushing my camera to the limits of the movement. The big monorail camera may solve few problems, only to introduce few other problems. Meanwhile, I was following many YouTube channels related to machining, woodworking and DIY. And that's when I started thinking about building the perfect camera for my needs. A foldable camera, light in weight, with geared movement, like what you get from a monorail. That was three years ago. Fusion 360 app was taken over that time as an app for DIYers on a budget, and I was using it. I could not stop thinking about this camera to the point that I almost stopped taking photos except for family occasions and photographic trips with friends, but not much to be proud of. I found myself in a trap. So I started spending time slowly imagining how this camera should be and I slowly managed to come out with initial design and I wanted to start building it. Building this camera has always been and still Till date a big challenge. I have a very demanding job that keeps me away from home for a long time and when I return home I usually have many family responsibilities to look after. I made use however of every spare time I have. 
I started with a small CNC router from China that I built myself. I bought the frame as a kit and built all the electronics myself. Little did I know the time about machining and what is uh, the definition of speeds and feeds. Uh, the camera build was my motivation to learn about machining, which now turned into my second passion next to photography. And quickly I realized that this top CNC router is not the way to go. I started looking for places where I can have access to a proper CNC mill. First, I tried to send some of my designs to uh, an overseas uh, company to machine them and have them sent back to me uh, but that didn't really work out well. Later I found a maker space near to where I lived. They had a house machine but they would not let me use it uh, and little did anyone there use it anyway. The machine was sitting idle for years and I was only allowed to use a bridge board like a manual mill. So I took that and I decided to try to complete the build on the manual mill which was a very slow process and I was so busy at work at that time so I had very uh, little time to work on the camera build but I've always worked on improving the design which was the advantage of all the delays in prototyping. With the development of coronavirus and the movement uh, restrictions everywhere I purchased a 3D printer and started prototyping the camera at home. It was a good experience and I made progress, but 3D printing was not really the way to go for this kind of camera. So once the makerspace reopened, I went there and I asked the manager to grant me access to the house machine and to my surprise my request was granted. My guess is that after seeing me working there for two years on my own projects, they finally trusted me to use the machine. It was my first time on a proper industrial grade CNC mill, but I've managed to get the hang of it quickly. Eventually, that's what I did for a living for a long time as a commissioning engineer. I figure out how to run, test, troubleshoot a piece of equipment, then hand it over to the team that will operate it. So the house was not that big of a challenge to start using. The uh, house is famous for having an easy controller to learn. So from next video I will be going through the steps of completing this camera build. I do appreciate your feedback if you are a photographer or a machinist. I believe that critique is the best way to succeed at almost anything and I'm always open for receiving questions. That's it for now, stay tuned and we'll see you on the next video where I talk more about the camera design and machining steps. Thanks for watching.